We're going to be starting a new series now called The Dark Hall, which is based on this image that I found on the internet. And I've been staring at this thing for a few months, wanting to do something with it. Uh, I can't find where it came from, so I can't share it with you. And of course, some other artist created this. So we'll just use this as a reference. We're going to start in this video by analyzing this reference image, looking at what we're going to need to do uh, in order to uh, see this project through. Once we do that, we'll start off with the modeling and we'll, we'll do the modeling. And then we'll start looking at texturing or creating uh, materials for this. And I think we're going to do this all in Blender this time. So usually I would use Substance Painter to do this. I'd like to try to do this uh, all in Blender. Uh, we'll also have a look at the lighting. There is not very complicated lighting uh, in this. Uh, but usually the, the texturing and the lighting kind of go together because the textures require light and, uh, you know, in order for the light to look good, you need to have uh, nice textures as well. So they kind of come together and then we'll do some rendering. So let's have a look at the major parts of this relatively simple scene. We've got a floor down here. Uh, now we could uh, create this out of pretty much a single plane or we could cut it here and have it extend down there so this is a very simple piece and then to create the texture on here we could use the brick the brick generator and adjust some of the parameters so that we get tiles we also have a wall here and the wall has two parts it's got bricks so once again we can of course use the, the brick generator and it's got some concrete up there, some concrete texture. Um, the thing we'd have to look at for the brick generator is is whether or not these bricks are even. They, I mean, they, they don't look too deformed. Uh, there's some grunge put on them, sort of like a leak texture up here. And there's some general dirt on them, a little bit of variation in color. But what I'm interested in is, is the offset, you know, how, how the bricks Line up. You got a row of bricks, and the next row of bricks is it sort of halfway over, and I probably would do it that way uh, if we're going to get into different sized bricks in in terms of their length. Then that introduces another complexity. So, but generally we could use the brick generator uh, to do the wall, and we also have a ceiling here which looks like a similar sort of tiles to here, all very even and in a row. So we could definitely. Uh, do that as well. Uh, so those are the four main parts of the room itself. Very straightforward. Uh, now let's have a look at uh, the other parts in this that would need to be modeled. And uh, one of the things we can see up here is there is a light and that's the main light in the scene. And uh, we so we have this structure which does not look too complicated to model and that's why I'm thinking that this series could be for somewhat uh, relative beginners and that light is uh, an, an emission texture is on here now I tend to use EV I mean I sometimes use cycles and I might but I, I often prefer EV for uh, scenes like this which are sort of almost like uh, lo-fi um, kind of computer game-ish, old-fashioned computer game. Uh, and so in that case, the if, if there's an emission on this part of the light, it won't actually release light, you know, to the environment. It'll, it'll be bright, uh, but it won't release light itself. So then you would need to have other lights here. Maybe a point light up here might create this somewhat circular pattern up there, or maybe a spotlight facing upwards and, an, and a spotlight facing downwards to get the light down here. So we have this to model. We have the door entrance so we would cut that out of a plane so that when we do the brick wall we're going to put an edge loop in there so uh, we could do actually one plane all right and we could copy it over and, and the, the cut would be at the same height. And so when we do this cut here, you know, this is where we would have the beginning of the door frame itself. And then of course, the cut would continue like that and down the hallway. All right, so we have that 
to, to model. We have these chairs to model. And what I tend to do, and what I think you would tend to do as well as you model, is think about, you know, well, how am I going to model this? And probably we would end up using curves. I would probably use a plain bevel here. We get rid of this bottom edge and you'd have a thing like that. We convert it to a curve and then you could put some, some depth to it and you would have that one and then you would mirror it over to the other side. So you would have the other leg like that. And you do another back thing like this. Again, a plane and convert it to a curve you could get that part and then we'd be left with just the seat parts which again could probably be made out of planes all right the same kind of thing is going to happen when we do the bed you know imagine we have a plane like this we come down here imagine that was a plane right there all right and then you just get rid of that bottom one and you bevel this and you convert it into a curve and then you copy this piece down to here all right, you might make it a slightly different bevel depth. And then you copy this piece and this piece and this one and this one. And you copy that whole thing down to here. You know, so you've got that. Now we would have to, again, zoom in and see there's a lot of these pieces, but it looks like just another curve piece there and another curve piece on the other side and across one there and across one there and then Maybe there's a central one, I'm not quite sure. And then a whole bunch of, of ones in between there. That kind of thing, all right? So we'll, we do end up using planes, deleting a portion, beveling it, and converting it to a curve. And that would create uh, the beds. And then we have the door. And so once again, we would start with a plane i mean you can use a cube but i would tend to use a plane and we would do this and then we'd say to ourselves okay we're going to need we're going to need a hole in this we're not going to use a boolean we're going to most likely we're going to put an edge loop down in here and we're going to put an edge loop down here and we're going to put an edge loop across here and another one across here and then we're gonna delete this face and then we'll extrude out to make sort of the other little part in there. And then this part is probably just a different texture, but you could put uh, an edge loop there and a seam there, and we could put uh, one material on here, another material, or maybe we want to uh, have this raised up a, a little bit so there's uh, more geometry, so we could do that as well. So uh, let's go back to this. I want to just circle that. So in terms of the modeling stuff, we've got the bed, maybe the door frame, the chairs, and the door. And that's really why, and the light, of course, that's why I chose this image so that there would only be, you know, looks like five different things to model. Of course, we have to model the walls and the floor and that. Uh, but I wanted it to be relatively simple so that we could talk about this and think about what primitive objects are we going to use to model this because when you get a more complicated model and I don't necessarily mean a car because you might use a different form of, of modeling itself to create the shapes but it's, say some uh, mechanical or industrial thing that's got pipes and wires and buttons and levers and you know you would often have to think okay so how am I going to go about modeling this and I haven't done too much of that on my channel I've just kind of gone ahead and said, okay, now I'm going to bring in a circle and I'm going to bevel it like this and I'm going to inset like that. And and I thought uh, this would be the opportunity to do that uh, with you. For those of you that are interested in in how I would go about doing this and maybe are a little bit of a beginner in Blender and, and are struggling a little bit with you know modeling uh, simple objects because you're just getting started and maybe this would be helpful or, or, or interesting uh, and then you know once we've done all that modeling uh, like I've said we're going to work on some texturing uh, once again I would typically use substance painter maybe a little bit of substance designer to do this but there's no reason why we couldn't use blender we will not achieve the exact same results uh, but we can get something that looks like this. Even if it's a cleaner, more, um, 
normal, not, not with not as much variation uh, in this, we should still be able to get a nice product out of just Blender itself. Now I'm going to escape to get rid of that. I want to, I want to look at just a couple more things here. And I want to focus on here. Let me switch to this. Um, right here where the bricks and the concrete meet, there is not an obvious uh, difference in height on this. It really looks like a single plane with a brick texture applied down here and a concrete texture applied above it. My point is that there is not a, there is not a lot of height information uh, on here. There is, there is just a little bit. And so, uh, although in cycles you could use the displacement and you could have all these bricks poking out to different depths and, and stuff like that, I, I don't think I want to do that. And because I want to use Eevee, and it's, there's not a, a simple way to get displacement in Eevee, I think I would end up just using Bump and, in order to do that because there's not that much that we have to to do and so I think that's a good thing and the same goes for the ceiling we certainly should be able to show some form of bump uh, just using uh, you know the bump uh, the bump channel of the principal BSDF so we don't have to worry too much so I think as long as we have uh, a line here we can have this as one material the brick material using the brick generator and adding in perhaps some variation in in the uh, in the color and we can uh, have another material for concrete we may consider using images from the internet you know free textures for concrete and or for bricks we'll see and then you can also see that there are some leaks here you could add these as uh, images as planes and uh, they are here and you know you can see a bunch of this we'll see how much of this we want to do uh, we're not going to be doing the character that is down here but we could do some sort of blood splattering uh, here and here using the same technique as adding this kind of grunge uh, these alphas and of course you can buy leak alphas you can create leak alphas in uh, Substance Designer and use them, and uh, we'll see what we uh, what we end up doing. All right, but that will be coming quite far down the road uh, when it comes to uh, you know creating this scene. So that's the plan: analyzing of the reference image, doing the modeling, doing the the texturing and the lighting. And uh, you know that hopefully we're not going to have to do too too much with that with the lighting part uh, because it is sort of a dark scene. I've actually lightened it up so you can see it a little bit better, and we'll render it. Chances are we will be just rendering in Eevee. We're going to get roughly uh, this uh, angle to our uh, image. There are ways, of course, to simulate the almost the exact camera angle. I'm not going to be dealing with that and that uh, that software. Uh, we're just going to be setting the scene up and doing it. Uh, one more thing I should mention, and that is the scale. Um, I'm not going to be doing this to any particular scale or real world measurements. And in fact, if we have a close look at this and we focus on the chairs, look at the size of these chairs and imagine a person sitting in this chair and then standing up. All right, however big they would be versus the size of this door opening and maybe even versus the size of this door. I mean, it's not so bad with the bed. The bed and the chair, it kind of looks like that person, you know, could lay down in the bed or sleep on the chair or sit in the chair. But this door opening looks far too large for that person. And this door does too, even though we know the door is closer. And so uh, I guess my point is that this, this image does not accurately deal with the scale. And, in, and even in terms of the ceiling height, like if you say, you know, an average 
person is say six feet tall and the ceiling is 11 feet or 10 feet or even nine uh, this is you know this is far higher than that in my opinion to that person I mean I've even drawn that one too big so you know you don't always have to be super concerned with that I mean you want it to look kind of realistic but I mean I think this looks like a really neat scene you know with those chairs in the door and the beds and all that stuff and it's not necessarily to scale you can use real world measurements you can bring in a reference figure like a human uh, model uh, to stand there and uh, we may end up doing that but we may not and we may eyeball it I think the more you model the more the better you get at uh, getting the sizes right and if you ever look at your image and you or your scene and you think what the heck is wrong with it, it just doesn't look right I can't put my finger on it there is a very good chance that it is the scale how things uh, relate to each other that is just off and that can throw your image off and make you dislike your scene so just be aware of that all right, so we have analyzed the reference image to some extent. We'll do a little bit more, and in the next video, we're going to start uh, putting down the walls and you know just mapping out the general dark hall, and then we'll get into modeling the other items. All right, so I hope you'll enjoy this series. I hope it'll be useful to you or interesting or motivate you to do something, and feel free to model along and texture along with me. Any textures that I use, if I find some or if I create them, you'll be able to do the exact same thing. All right, if you, uh, if you choose to do so. So, yeah, hope to see you in the series. Thanks very much for coming by, and uh, we'll get started very soon.